going to say something before? I know, but I see you tied up. You're busy. Uh, I don't have words to express how much I appreciate uh, this beautiful opportunity to be together with you uh, beginning this morning in our Bible study and, and now to see this beautiful audience and hear you lifting your voices up so beautifully. It's just quite moving. I'm quite impressed with the intelligent manner in which the services were carried out, where all the brethren had their positions and showing honor and respect to God. And I think that's the way it should go. And that speaks well for the eldership of this church uh, with his working deacons and minister and all of the members. I, I, I can't express in words how much I appreciate having this opportunity uh, to be with you in this gospel meeting. And number one, we know that God is behind it. And, and then back in behind God, I have to uh, thank my dear friend, Chad Dillahype, for speaking so strongly concerning me and informing the elders about my work and my little preaching that I do. And that has, has caused them to decide, well, we'll let him come and present the word of God. Uh, uh, Chad, you, he, he really gave me some strong recommendations. But Chad, I tell you about those recommendations. They can, they can really get you in trouble. I uh, heard a story about a young lady. She came to the preacher excited. She said, preacher said, I've met the dream man of my life, and I want to marry him. And, and I, we want to marry right away. He said, the thing that impressed me so much about him, everywhere I went and brought his name up, people spoke well of him. So he's so, he was so highly recommended. Every way that, he's great, he's great. His recommendations were something else. And I just, on that, I, I want to marry him. He just wanted to slow down a little bit. He said, no, but he's so recommended so highly. So they, they went on and preached upon the ceremony. And it wasn't very long after that, a few months, she came to the preacher with a shocker. She said, preacher, I want you to help me through this. She says, I'm planning on getting a divorce. I want to divorce this man I married. He said, well, I don't understand that. You said he was so wonderful and, and you spoke so highly of him and said he was just recommended so highly by so many people. I don't understand that all these recommendations. She said that rascal was over-recommended. <laughs> so there is such a thing as over-recommended. Chad, I hope you haven't done that. <laughs> but so, we thank you. Thank you for this privilege. And uh, the lesson that I, I'm gonna talk about is uh, uh, one that I used in polishing the pulpit. Uh, last year or the year before. It's one of the old chart lessons that I have and, and uh, it was suggested that I be, bring it here. A few of you may have been there at that time, uh, but then I missed the bulk of you were not there. Uh, and so it was recommended that I bring this particular lesson that has been put out here in such a beautiful way. This church is really prepared. I got my old chart over there and then it's up here on the board. I commend you for the beautiful way that you make arrangements so that the Word of God can be taught and practiced in a manner we believe this is pleasing and acceptable in the sight of God. Now, I'm not an artist, but that's something I <laughs> struggled to put together years, years ago, many years ago. We used to preach using these charts, and if we didn't have the chart, we, we had the blackboard. Uh, before we got all these marvelous inventions. So I'm still using that. I have uh, others, I know one particular, but I'm, I'm going to work with this and you can see it up here. And I may have to look over that a little bit to see where I am, uh, but we want you to kind of understand uh, what this lesson is all about. It describes the dilemma 
uh, that souls are in caused by Satan and Satan's servants. And God is the only one that can deliver us uh, from these two predators here, the lion and the bear. Uh, the lion and the bear were two of the most fierce uh, predators uh, in Bible times. Matter of fact, when David argued in favor of let me go fight Goliath, uh, King Saul felt like David was just a youngster, just a youth and wasn't able to do that. But David said that uh, uh, as a shepherd boy, uh, a lion and a bear attacked the sheep. And he says, uh, God helped him and God caused me to overcome the lion and the bear. And that, was, that shows you how bad these two characters were. Now, I don't know whether a lion and a bear both attacked the sheep at the same time, but it's, it's not likely that they did. I don't be dogmatic about it because uh, lions and sheep, they don't run together. I know that. They don't run together and so because each one of them is bad enough by himself. But anyway, they uh, attacked his, his sheep and, and uh, he killed them through the power of God, was able to overcome them. So the lion and bear got to become a kind of a cliche, a, a word meaning a tough position. Uh, if the lion doesn't get you the bear will, either way you go, and we have some little expressions like out of the frying, flying, uh, frying pan into the skillet, you know, you just can't get away. Uh, and so the lion and the bear stands for a terrible, terrible, dangerous a dilemma for one to be in. And uh, one time even God himself was reprimanding the people for what happened what they had done and they're not going to get away from me. And so if you think you can get away from me, you'll be like a man fleeing from a lion and met by a bear. Now, when God gets after you, uh, you cannot get away at all. But now, uh, this lion and bear uh, turned out to be such a terrible, terrible position for a man, woman, boy, or girl to get caught in it stands for trouble that look like you just can't get out of. Now, if God got you between the lion and bear, you're not going to get away from him. But the devil, he's picked that up, and he has used that in a most destructive and uh, marvelous in one way and destructive way the other. And if you can notice here, as you look at the chart, I have a picture of a lion and I have a picture of a bear. And this lion and this bear represents the devil. Uh, the devil, if he can't get you one way, he will get you the other. And of course, the, the lion way of, of getting you is the immorality and all the evil things that are going on in the world today. And uh, it's, you can't hardly turn your television on or anything. It's so much evil, murder, Drunkenness, drugs, filth, immorality. Oh, you know all about it. These laws are being passed uh, to, to encourage and to justify people living together. And, even, and if they don't marry, give them, if they're living together, give them the same rights they would have if they were actually married. And if you marry a man, marries a man, it's all right. A woman, a woman, it's all right. Abortion, all this beside all of the... Uh, it's, it's, it's almost seemed like the end of the world is coming and when you look at the way it was in the days of Noah and people were marrying and giving in marriage and, and, and their thoughts and their imaginations of their hearts were evil continuously and as you watch the television I don't know if it's getting any worse it may be that uh, we're able with our system of communication satellites and all this we can see it more but it does seem like it to me that it is getting worse and worse. And Satan is riding high, but uh, he is not going to win this fight. There's going to be a few that's going to overcome him through the power uh, of, of, of our God. And uh, what I have uh, put on the board is a description of the, of the condition and the trouble that we're in. Uh, now, the lion, I can't help but 
look at my chart. I was so used to that. If I didn't look over there every night, and you're looking up here, if I didn't look over there every now and then, I, I just couldn't hardly preach it. But anyway, uh, that, that lion over there, he represents moral sins. And the world is steeped in immorality. That's the main kind of sin that the world is involved in. Immorality, drunkenness, gambling, stealing, killing, fornication, all kind of terrible stuff. And of course, I call those uh, moral sins. And those who practice that, unless they take the Lord's way out, they're going to have to spend eternity in hell suffering from those kinds of sins. Now, uh, but uh, this lion represents that type of sin. And the other side, I have this bear. Uh, he is bad as a lion, and uh, he represents religious sin. And uh, this, 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 this guy running here, he is trying to get away from the lion, and the reason is, he's like a few people, they, they're pretty sick of this old sinful stuff. They, they're tired of it. They, here's a guy that almost got killed. He got caught with another man's wife, and, and he just, just almost got killed from that. Another one, he took an overdose and barely got through that. His buddy took it, and he died. And it's, it's just terrible. All this kind of stuff was going on. And, then, and this man here, he, 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 he kind of, he just fell out with that. He said, right, this, and we have no problem knowing that this is of the devil. And I have on this side, a uh, moral sin, that's the line. And the religious sin on the other side, uh, 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 that's the bear. And if you, did, if, you, if you notice this, that on this chart, I have under this, this line, Dirty John's Tavern, I just call it that. Because every kind of thing you can think of, wicked, is going on at Dirty John's. Beer, wine, crack, everything is being used in there. All kind of dancing, vulgarity, dirty dance. It just, and, and, and I, I, it make you blush to try to name what some dancers they call them now. It's just awful. And that's going on over there. And, 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 and uh, this guy is over in Dirty John's, and he almost got killed back there in the back room trying to gamble and got pulled a gun on him. And, he, and he, he's had it pretty rough. That's a bad life to have to live. And uh, he, he had to just barely escape uh, with his life on some occasions and uh, overdoses. And he made it through that. And he began to feel like, so this, 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 this ain't going to work. I got to gear this kind of stuff up. Because when, when, when the devil got you with this mess, it, it, your life is, is tragic. You might see a young fella all dressed up, out of down, don't care how, he dressed so terrible now. Uh, you say, hey, why don't you come in? We're having a Bible study. It's about Bible study. Will you come in? Say, oh, I ain't going over there. I'm going where the action is. Church is too dead. I'm going where the action is. And so he goes on down there to Dirty John's, and he gets in there and gets into a tussle in there and get a hold and get into some bad stuff in there. And the next thing you know, he'll come to the emergency wagon and, and uh, ca carrying him out. He went down to Dirty John where the action was and then got put out of action down at Dirty John. All that, all that kind of stuff is happening down there. And he, 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 he finally said, now this, 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 this stuff ain't going to work. We might have got robbed a time or two in there. Hey, man, this, 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 this ain't going to work. I got to give this up. And somebody's telling me, you ought, to go to, you, 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 you ought to give your life to the Lord, which is correct. But what happens, he just said, I'm going to go join church. And he doesn't know what church, and I'm just going to get in somebody's church. He goes to join church. And so this is, this is him running. He's trying to get away from this. He want to give this stuff up. So he's running from the line. But what he doesn't know where he's going just to join church, he still hasn't gotten away from the devil because the devil is like the bear. If he can't hold you with his lion tactics, he's going to get you with the bear tactics. For example, I, 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 I did this on purpose. I call this place over here where all of this sinful stuff is going. It represents all immorality. Uh, and and, 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 and uh, that's why I call it Dirty John's Tabernacle. 
uh, di- rather tavern. <laughs> and, but then, so he runs and he join, joins St. John's Tabernacle, getting away from Dirty John's Tavern. But what he uh, doesn't realize is that one is as bad as the other. Why? Because they're sinning over at St. John's Tabernacle, just like they're sinning over here at Dirty John. A tariff, tariff. What it is, moral sins over here and religious sins over there. Sin is sin. And all sin can cause you to be lost. Uh, uh, but, you know, but I, I, I'll say this about Dirty John's. Uh, he, you have to give him credit this. He did call it Dirty John's. This is, this is dirty at Dirty John's, but they don't call it that over there. And, and, if, and if you get knocked in the head at Dirty John's, and they take you to the hospital, ain't no need of you running down Dirty John's because they told you the sign said dirty. <laughs> so you, but this will fool you. St. John's Tabernacle sounds a whole lot better than Dirty John's, doesn't it? Now you kind of talk back to me and let, help me know that I'm on the right track. I use the amen every now and then, and they're like their sisters, and, and I know the ladies, they wanna, you may want to say something, but you might feel like, well, I, I can't say amen because we can't say amen, you know, in, in a church like that, that we, the women can't keep silent. Well, I'm not going to get off into that, because I get off in that, and some brother be upset and miss the lesson. So, but I still look like there are more sisters here than men, so I still need your support, because I'm fixing to get in full speed on this thing, and I'm going to have to have some help. And what I want you to do, if I'm right about it, you don't have to say, amen, brother. No, you don't have to do that. Just do like that. I know then, you're with me. But I say, well, it's maybe something you, you say I don't agree with. Well, do like that. <laughs> Is that right? Just do something. Uh, all right, then. Uh, and I, uh, what I want you to see, it's absolutely amazing that Dirty John's and St. John's place here over here at Tabernacle, they are much alike. And both of them belongs to the devil. You see, the devil is in the church business just like he is in the Dirty John Tavern business. Some people are like, oh, no, I don't know about that preacher. About the church. Yes, he is. I'm going to give you this because this is a solid basis for what other few points I'm going to bring out about this. I could preach on this several nights to get this out. But uh, I don't, do they have a reader. Anybody want to read for me? You brother, men, uh, read it. Uh, you don't have to read a whole lot, but several scriptures. Get me 1 Timothy 4 and 1. 2 Corinthians 11. Uh, about uh, 14, if my memory is correct. Revelations 2, 8 and 9. I want to show you uh, that the devil... Uh, uh, it's in the church business too. Uh, and I have found out that there's a lot of stuff that's going on in Dirty John. It's also going on in St. John. And you know the reason why? Because the devil is the author of both of them. This one is tricky. You think you're getting away. You're in church now. You're away from this over here. But you get over there and you're going to find out that some of the same stuff that's going on at Dirty John is going on at St. John. And the reason for it, they both belong to the devil. That's why he tricks you. People, they run away from this and they join church. And they still still have them. Because they're committing, uh, they're committing moral sin. Uh, re- yes, uh, uh, religious sins. While over here, it's mostly more. I'm going to show you this, that the devil does have churches. Uh, 1 Timothy 4.1. One. one of you brothers just kind of read it for me there, please. Now the Spirit speaks expressly. The Spirit speaks expressly. That in the latter times. In the latter times. Some shall depart from the faith. Yes. Giving what? Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Oh, the devil's got doctrine. Doctrines of devils. Yes, he does have doctrine. Well, if the devil have doctrine, what else? He said a little bit more about that too, didn't he? Speaking what? Okay. Don't, don't give it up too quick. Doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy. We could quote these. I just wanted to, to try to make it more impressive. Yeah. Having their conscience with a hot iron. Yeah, read on a little bit more. 
permitting to marry. And commanding to abstain from being. Uh huh. Which God has created to be received. Well, thank Paul even brought this out and told Timothy in the latter times some should depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The devil has doctrine. And he gave a hint at some of the doctrine forbidden to marry. Devil's going to have a doctrine that, 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 that you can't marry. Certain ones, even if they wanted to, they can't marry. That's doctrine. And command you to abstain from meats. Have you ever heard tell of a church that, and they're trying to change that now, that used to say that on, on Fridays, a certain time, you don't eat feet, you don't eat meat. And I never ever understood that. They say you don't eat meat, but you can eat fish. I thought that fish was meat. I thought meat was meat either way. But anyway, <laughs> this, this doctrine, forbidden to marry. What church is that? that uh, certain members cannot marry. Nuns can't marry, the priests can't marry, the Pope can't marry. Cause they got a little trick in there. I was reading here not long ago, some time ago, that the Pope, uh, he can't have a wife either, said, but he can have a housekeeper. Uh, you know, a lady take care of the house. Well, I better move on from that. But, <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, doctrines of devils. Second Corinthians 8, uh, 11, uh, let's see. What it says there about the devil, and maybe about the 14th verse, start there, read that, and we'll get one other, and then when I solidify this, then I can really move on to this point to show you that the devil's in the church business, just like he is in uh, the tavern business. Okay? Second Corinthians 11, I believe it is. And perhaps you can start with about the 14 verse, let's see what that says. 2 Corinthians, 11th chapter. Chapter 11. That's it. No more. Here we got the devil again. Satan himself has transformed himself into an angel of light. Read. Therefore, it's no great thing. If his what? His ministers. The devil has ministers. In 1 Timothy 4, 1, it says he has doctrines. Doctrines of the devil, and the devil has ministers. I want to ask you this question. If the devil's ministers preach the devil's doctrines, whose church will he make? Come on, y'all. The devil's churches. That's all right. The devil is in the church business. Not just only this. Why is he in the church business? Because all he can't get uh, people to live here moral and filthy like this, he still wants them. He won't let them get away. He's got a church for them. So that when they join in, he still got them. If you run away from Dirty John and join St. John's Tabernacle, the bear got you. He still got you. See, you never thought about it that way. I think in Revelation, the second chapter, verse 8 and 9, it even mentioned uh, about the devil uh, and his Tabernacles or his churches. It says it in a certain way. Get me that one. And we won't have you do all this reading unless we get Chad some night up here to read right back to me so we can move. But now in Revelation 289, what does that say? And to the angel of the church in Smyrna, right. Right. These things said the first and the last. Yes. And hmm. again. Read on. I know thy tribulation. I know that. Yes. But thou art rich. Read on. That's the blasphemy of those that were some of the sin that were Jews, but what? And they are not. They are not? But are a synagogue of Satan. Oh, oh. What is a synagogue? A church. They are the church of Satan. The Bible teaches that the devil is in the church business. He's the bear that grabs you when you run away from the lion. The lion, as I said, moral sin. And the bear, religious sin. Sin is sin, and any of it would cause you to be lost. One of, uh, one of the, 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 the most terrifying of the persecutors was Saul of Tarsus, but morality, he was, he, his conscience was clear. He was a good moral man, but he said he was chief of sinners. Why? Because he was breaking God's religious laws. Now, what I want you to see is that the two of them, here's a guy running away from this stuff over here, then he joins Say St. John, I just use it, St. John's Tabernacle. And lo and behold, he found out 
that one of the preachers in there is uh, messing around and trying to do ugly thing to his little boy. Got a little boy at the altar working in there, but uh, somewhere in the back room, the old priest is doing ugly stuff. Wait a minute. When you go back in Dirty John's and you go back in that back room where they're gambling and all that kind of stuff, anything can be going on back there, can't Oh, yeah. Well, then, go with the denomination church. You find the same stuff going on over there. And the more you look at it, the more and more you see that it's cut from the same cloth. The devil has churches just like he has uh, taverns. And you got to get away from both of them. And in a few moments of us hasten on so you can get down to the heart of it. But if you, if you really looked at it, <laughs> uh, you, 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 let me show you. Over at Dirty John, they had, this, they had a night where the women are doing all that vulgar dancing, almost naked and holding to the pole and doing all those ugly kind of twists and ugly stuff. And, you know, that's awful. And so here's, here's the preacher for one of, at St. John's Tabernacle. He goes, he tells his boys, say, come on out of there. That's terrible going on there. Don't you know the Bible says that not to look on a woman to lust after her? If you do, you, you, you commit adultery in your heart. Come away from there. Don't be looking at that filthy stuff. Yeah, boy, tells her, don't, leave me alone. I'm grown. I'll do what I want to in here. I don't care what the Bible said. And he says, oh, what are we going to come to? And he is just as bad as this fellow over there. Because uh, the Bible teaches this, that... Uh, Women are not supposed to preach. Let your women keep silent in the church. It's not permitted for them to speak, but to be in silence. Not only that, Ephesians 5.19 and other scriptures on the music of this church, every scripture in the New Testament telling us how we are to worship and what we're to use in worship as far as music is singing, vocal music. Nothing about pianos and organs and all this kind of stuff. You go right to that, go right back to that preacher who got on that boy and told him about looking at this filth. Oh, what's the world coming to? You need to come out of there. I tell you something happened one time. Uh, uh, we, 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 I think we had gained her. We're about to gain her. This, this lady was a member of the Baptist church and she, she saw the truth and I pressed her. I said, your preacher's not preaching the truth. And so she, she asked me to speak over there. And the only reason that preacher said you can speak was because, yeah, she was he about to lose her, and he didn't, and he had to do something because he was going to lose one of his best members, so he let me speak. And I began to point out to him on the platform that, uh, uh, well, the Bible teaches that ministers are not to be reverend. That's God's name. And I pointed out to him that the Bible teaches that we are to sing, make melody in our heart. Paul said, sing, make melody in your heart. And I tell him, Paul said this, and Paul said that. You know, he got so mad, he jumped up, and he said, I don't care what Paul said. Oh, this guy over here, you tell him, uh, the Lord said, don't, don't be r- lusting after women in Matthew 5, 28. He don't care what the Lord said. And this preacher don't care what Paul said. Cut from the same cloth. Neither one of them care what the Bible say. Why? Because uh, that's the devil's tabernacle over there. And you're going to have to watch and see what you get into and see what you're in because the devil is in the church business also. Over here, they do anything they want to. And over here, they do it. They gamble over here. They gamble over there. Years ago, they pretty well stopped that part now. But years ago, they used to have ice cream suppers at denominational churches. And they have the ladies out, uh, you know, serving. Maybe it's $3 a scoop. Uh, and over here, you're subject to get robbed over here. In the back rooms, anybody can. Uh, you may feel... A cold steel on your side back in that back room where they're gambling and carrying on. And the guy said, give me, give me your money. And you don't want to give him any pressure. You feel that, you, just, you let him have it. And that makes sense. Get out and get out of that quick as you can. But over here, I know where they used to do in sale, they, 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 the preachers from among the denominations, especially among the black people, they, they get their prettiest sisters to be at the table selling ice cream, scoop up at five, three or four dollars a scoop. One man goes by there and puts a bowl out there. She put a little scoop of it in there. She said, this is this, this $5. This is this a little bit. You can hardly hem it up in a spoon. She said, well, 
and you know it's for the Lord, she using the Lord like a pistol. Put it in the right. In other words, if that guy says, give me your money, and, and that pistol, you feel that cold steel. And over here, it, it, it's robbing you there, and you say, well, it, 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 it's for the Lord. So they're robbing up, they rob it over here, they're robbing over there, they're making promises over here. I, I, I'm sorry that I didn't bring them with me, but I have all kind of evidences. I have evidences where the same kind of stuff that's going over over here is going on over there. I, I think, uh, let me see one of those things. Yeah, I, I had a case where a man said he's suing his church for false of the pastors tricked him. Pastor told him that if he give, I think, $700, the Lord's going to bless him, told him about how much he was going to get back. And he never got it, so he sued the church, sued the preacher. He said, he, he promised me this, and I didn't get it. Uh, they'll lie to you over here and promise you stuff, but they'll lie to you over there and promise you stuff, too, because it all belongs to the devil. Gambling here, gambling there. I have a chart, a rather card, where this church was having a bazaar, and, and, uh, and it says that there will be uh, uh, all kind of, you know, good things that you can buy and they're serving. And not only that, but it talked about some other things. And they will be serving beer. I know you can get some beer at Dirty John's. What are you doing getting beer over at St. John's Tabernacle? Because they belong to the devil too. I hope I'm making my point here. Yes, sir. Set it over there. Said it over there too. My nephew, great gospel preacher, was called by a Catholic priest once to come. He didn't know what the priest wanted. He said, I need to talk with you. And so he went over there and said, the first thing he did when he got there, the priest says, uh, uh, would you like a drink? He wasn't just talking about, pop, you know, Coca-Cola. <laughs> he was talking about a shot of whiskey. The priest asked him, would you like to have a drink? And, and Brother David said, oh, no, 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 I don't, I don't want no drink. He said, well, do you mind if I have me one? <laughs> you check them out. They get more and more like Dirty John's. St. John, and, and if you get in there and you work in there, you lose your soul because it belongs to the devil. They're over there doing religious sin. Or over here, they're doing moral sins. You're running from a lion, want to get away from that kind of life? Make sure you don't let the bear get you. Ah. Pretty strong, isn't it? But it's true. And I tell you what, I could, there's so many things that similar over there. You say, well, how come they're so much alike? Well, uh, it used to be this way. You could pretty well tell, say, like General Motors, you could tell their cars, whether it was a Cadillac Ford, and rather Cadillac or, or Chevrolet, uh, uh, cars like they all kind of favor. And if it's uh, Ford, uh, it'd be Lincoln on down their favor. And the answer was, oh, look at this, this, this little Ford kind of looked like a Lincoln. Why? Because Lincoln, you know, they made it. They made it. This stuff over here is a whole lot like what's over here. Why? Because the devil made them both to trap you and ensnare you. And you got to get away from that. And the only way you can get away from the lion and the bear, you have to turn to Christ. Down here we have the representing Christ. You got to come out. There's a plan of salvation that can free you from dirty John and can free you from St. John. And, 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 and what you have to do is the same. One of the most amazing things, if I had the time, I could show you. Like 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, you can check that later. Acts 22, 16, the uh, uh, people, uh, uh, a catalog of all kind of sins were named. All kind of immorality. Drunkenness, murder, all kind of things. And those who obeyed it says, such were some of you. Lesbians, all of that. All of that. So you've been washed. You had to be washed. The waters of baptism. Saul of Tarsus, who was a religious sinner, chief of sinners, when he got straightened out, he was told, Acts 22, 16, arise and be baptized and wash away your sin. He belonged to the old Jewish church. He was religious, but he had to be washed. 
These folks over here in the immoral world, they have to be washed. If there's any difference, why? They both have to be washed. Because they're both sinners. You're just as lost in the religious world if you're not following the commandments of Christ as it would be in the moral world. And so in the water of baptism, if you've been dealing with dirty John, all of that will be washed away. And if you've been following the devil, teaching the doctrine and commandments of men, it will all be washed away. And then what does the Lord do? He adds you to his church. The only church that heaven has a record of, the church of Christ. That's where you have to be. That's the only way you can get away from the lion and the bear is in the Lord's church. And if you get in there and go to acting like uh, they do in other places, you're going to have some trouble because the Lord is going to cast you out in the day of judgment, cast you out into the lake of fire. But that's your only way out. If you're not a member of the Lord's church, then you need to do so this morning. It's very simple. What do you have to do? Several steps. You have to hear the gospel of Christ. Acts 15 and 7. What's that? The fact that Christ died for your sins and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day. You must hear the gospel of Christ. And then uh, how can you obey it? The fact that Christ died and was buried and rose again the third day. Those are facts. You, can you obey facts? No. You obey the form of those facts. As Christ died for your sins, you die to your sins. If the religious sins, turn from them. Men made churches, turn from them. Dirty Johns and all those other places, turn from it. Not just slow down and then get baptized and pick back up. No, 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 no. You quit it. Turn from it. Repent of your sins. And then confess the name of Christ before men. That you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Romans 10 and 10. And then the final step in the act of baptism. In baptism, all of your sins are washed away. All of this stuff you did in Dirty John, and all these commandments of men you obeyed at St. John's, all that's washed away. And the Lord adds you to his church where there is salvation. And if you live faithful in the air to death, the lion and the bear can't get you no more. One day you hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. I wonder do we have someone here this morning say, I see it now. This is where you need to be, right there in the middle. Are you here? We've given you the steps that you must take. Do you have the courage? You ought to be glad to get aloof from this stuff. I know sometimes it's a little hard, especially over here, to give up religious sin, but you must give them up because 1 John 3, 4, sin is the transgression of God's law. That's what sin is, transgressing God's law. And if you transgress his Moral laws, that make you a sinner. If you transgress his religious laws, that make you a sinner. And therefore, to get rid of your sins, you have to go in the water of baptism. And not just, just, just getting baptized by itself, it's several things that go with it. You have to repent. Hear, believe, repent, confess, and then be baptized. The biggest thing, you know, some people say that, they, that uh, baptism, that's the hardest thing to go in the water. No, 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 no. Repentance is the hardest part. Because repentance means you got to quit your devilment. You got to turn from it. Not slow down, get baptized, and then pick back up. Oh no, you got to quit. If you're not willing to turn from your sin, the Lord will not save you in them. This is your out. Christ will save you from the bad and from the lion. Just like he saved uh, uh, David, that boy. Gave him the power to overcome the lion and the bear. You can overcome them this morning by making this giant step. Coming forward, we're going to sing a song of encouragement. If you're willing to turn from what you know is wrong and then go down in the water of grave of baptism, you come up out of the water in Christ, saved from all your past sin. If you be faithful unto death, you get a crown of life that fade if not away. I'm wondering, is there someone willing to come? We're going to stand and sing this song, and that's just encourage you to come. We don't have to have a song, but that just make it easier for you. And what you do, you say, well, I've been thinking about that, and I, haven't, I know I need to do something, and you've made it clear. Well, what you do, when we stand and we start singing, you start walking. Put the book down, and members of the church, if you brought a visitor, and they, you've been wanting them to hear the truth, Remember, you kind of kind of stand kind of loose because they may want to come out. And that'd be pitiful. I don't work this hard and they want to come out and you got them blocked. They can't get out. 
No, let, let them out. It's kind of, you know, staying. And even if they say, well, I want to go, you tell them, I'll walk with you. I'll, I'll go with you. You will? Yeah, you can go with them. If a kid is looking at old uh, crack house and, and kind of looking in there, you heard about what they're doing there and all that, and he kind of, hey, we want to go here, come an old crack here. He said, boy, you don't know what you're missing. I'm scared to go in there. I'll, try, I'll go with you. He'll go with him, carry him on in the crack house. If you can't leave somebody to cry and help him come to Christ, you're in bad shape. Why don't you come right now while we stand and sing? Thank you. 